Hi, uh, my name is Claire Hemmington. I am a cat behaviourist and founder of Honeysuckle Cat Toys. And for ages, I've wanted to put together a series of videos all about making the world a better place for cats. Um, I've finally been able to make the first video, which is all about getting cats to play more. Um, giving our cats opportunities to play is one of the most important things we can do for them. It helps them um, keep fit and active, it stops them getting bored and frustrated, it can be used in homes where cats aren't getting on as a way of associating each other's presence with something more positive. Um, also very good for raising the emotional state of cats that suffer from anxiety and in achieving all these things that can help reduce the chances of problem behaviours developing. So. Why do cats play? Um, they learn to play as kittens, whereas we might call it play. What they're doing is they're practicing for when they're going out hunting. And this continues throughout their lives. Um, do all cats play? Some of my clients, they say that their cat doesn't play and it's true. Some cats have a strong play drive and others not so much. Um, but in my experience, you can always get a cat to play. It's just a question of finding the right toy. It doesn't have to be an expensive toy um, that you've gone out and bought, but it can be as simple as a shoelace, um, a box, a piece of scrunched up paper. Um, I've even had someone tell me that the only thing their cat will play with, uh, let's say, uh, a feminine hygiene product um, that could resemble a mouse. So, um, unless like that cat who apparently used to seek out that particular item, finding the right toy is usually a case of trial and error. Um, so if you wonder why your cats get tired of their toys so quickly, apart from the fact that they've got a very short span of attention, it's because once they've killed them, that toy is dead to them. But there are things we can do to keep our cat's toys novel and interesting, and I'll come on to that later. So let's take a look at um, some very simple toys that you can make out of things that you've got at home. So here we are. Whoops. Here is a very simple shoelace. I like to knot these throughout their length just to really give the cat something to get their teeth around. And at the end of it, you can have something like a feather or as you may have seen earlier, I put a mouse onto the end of this one. And here's a rabbit's tail that I found in the garden. I live in the country, so I sometimes find these things in the garden. I've put that onto um, some shoelaces and a bit of hessian rope. Um, I've washed it, of course. Things like these bits of plastic that you get around tubs, you can tie that to a shoelace, but with things like this, really, really important that you supervise your cat. Then you have good old straws and you can either just give them to your cat on their own like this or I like to put some elastic through the straw and then attach that to a piece of shoelace or cord. I haven't tied the knots through that one so I'll have to do that and then you can trail that along the floor for your cat to chase. Feathers, uh, again this is one that I found whilst out walking, so if you do happen to go on a walk then you can always keep your eye out for feathers that have been left behind by um, the birds. And these are great again for sticking in the ends of shoelaces and bits of cord. You can also, if you've got any old scratching posts that your cats no longer use, you can cut off a piece of the sisal twine from the post and use that to tie things on to. For some reason, cats seem to love licking sisal twine and getting their teeth around it. So that's a nice texture for them to play with. Scrunched up pieces of paper, I think we all know what they look like. Cardboard boxes or paper bags ensure that uh, where well, you have paper bags all the handles are removed and you can put treats, 
toy or a pinch of catnip inside and that makes exploring really fun. In terms of shop-bought toys, I do tend to like the fishing rod type toys that have the plastic uh, wand at the end and then a length of cord, not dissimilar to shoelaces, um, but you can actually control these a bit better because of the rigidity of the rod and then again some have bits already stuck in them and replacement bits that you can get for them. Um, and some don't. Those toys, the fishing rod toys, are brilliant for all cats in terms of getting them really running around, but they're especially good for cats that might be anxious about you getting too close to them as they allow you to play with them at a distance. So for example, you could be sitting in front of the TV, have one in your hand and just be wiggling it about whilst focusing on the TV, that will really allow your anxious cat to get engaged and focused on the toy, knowing that your focus isn't on them. And they're also good for cats and can get a bit bitey or aggressive as they keep your hands well away from the cat's danger zone, so teeth and claws. Also, there are the laser pointers These are great for getting cats, again, moving around, but always have a small toy or treat in your hand that you can throw to allow your cat to capture, bite and complete the kill. It's very important in terms of them not getting frustrated that they be allowed to physically grab onto something at the point at which they pounce on that little red dot. Then you've got the bigger toys for cats that like to kick and rake or if you have a cat that likes to take out his frustrations on your limbs. So these are kicker type toys, really, really good for cats to kind of get hold of and take any paint up frustration out on. And then of course there are the smelly toys. So these are toys that contain things like catnip and valerian, silver vine, or tetarian honeysuckle wood. Catnip, not all cats respond to catnip, whether or not a can, cat does respond to catnip, is actually genetically determined with only one in three cats showing a response to catnip. So if your cat is one of those one in three, then you can always try one of the other smellies. Valerian is particularly smelly. This is great. Uh, this is called a plague rat and it's got a lovely long tail as well. But yeah, very smelly to our human noses. Smells like old socks, but probably worth the sacrifice if it's something that your cat particularly favours. Tetarian Honeysuckle. This is a pretty new product, certainly to the UK market and to Europe. I brought this in around 18 months ago from Canada where they've been using it as a cat toy for around about 30 years now. It contains a really lovely smelling compound to them just lightly fragrant to us, so not smelly like valerian, just a nice, um, delicate fragrance, but absolute magic as far as the cats are concerned. And if, but inevitably what goes up must come down and usually you'll find that if your cat's been playing with one of these smelly toys, they might just well have a nice nap afterwards. There are other forms of cat enrichment, not specifically toys, uh, but there are now videos that are especially created for cats that you can find on YouTube. I like the ones that feature wild birds and mice making the scurrying and fluttering sounds. As well as these, there are also video games for cats. These have graphics of mice and pieces of string and fish that move around the screen and dart on and off the sides. 
but again bear in mind that your cat might find these a little bit frustrating because they can't actually physically get to the target um, it's probably a good idea for you to either put on one of the shorter videos or just watch out for any signs of frustration in your cat. My cat Billy now, he, he doesn't get frustrated, he just simply gets completely absorbed in the videos. It's funny. So, how should we be playing with our cats? The thing to do is play every day and at the times when they're naturally most active. This course might vary from cat to cat, but generally speaking, cats are at their most active early in the morning and evening time. With all toys that you use to play with your cat, it's a good idea to move them around in a way that simulates the movement of their prey in the wild, such as mice and birds. So for example, moving the toy unpredictably, trailing it along the floor for a short distance, then keeping it still for a few moments, moving it suddenly to the left or right, moving it slowly again, then suddenly quickly, allowing it to fly briefly, then trailing it along the floor again. With the fishing rod toys, I actually find that um, quite a lot of the time the cat's more interested in the rod end of the toy than they are the other end. And here's one that um, is broken, but I actually use this rounded end of the toy to put underneath the carpet or a mat and just have that end peeking out. And then I retract it, push it out retract it for a longer period of time. It just really helps to keep cats focused and interested on their prey. I would suggest playing in short bursts up to a maximum of around about five minutes. But if your cat wants to keep going, then let him. Obviously, as we talked about earlier, cats have different play drives. Um, cat kittens, for example, bundles of energy, need lots of play and for longer periods of time. Elderly cats definitely can still benefit from play, just more gentle play for shorter periods of time. I would suggest not playing with your cat to a level of frequency that can't be sustained when life goes back to normal and we all return to work. Cats are creatures of routine, so you don't want to be suddenly stopping a new routine that you've created for them simply because you're off and you haven't got an awful lot else to do. So how can we keep cats interested in their toys? Well, one way is to get a self-sealable bag, one of these ones that clips together, put in it a pinch of catnip if your cat's into catnip or valerian you can use valerian tea bags that you can get from the supermarket in fact these actually make brilliant toys on their own for cats that like valerian so you can put a pinch of valerian into the bag and then simply put all your cat's smaller toys into the bag put it away and bring one or two toys out every day, rotate them, and this will help keep them novel and interesting for your cats. Toys that disintegrate or that look 
different when they come back to a cat might encourage him to persist with it a bit more. For example, this is a honeysuckle kicker. It's got ground honeysuckle wood in it, but it's made from cassian. So the cat can really get their claws into it and pull bits out of it and um, it can be taken away. Then it will appear slightly different when it comes back to them and they can have another go at it. If you have ever experienced frustration because you've been woken up by your cat during the night, this is because cats are naturally more nocturnal than us, so always make sure they have different toys at night to keep them amused and again rotate this. Goes without saying in terms of safety and toys, do supervise your cats when playing with toys and never leave anything out that can get caught around their necks. You know, the shoelaces, fishing rod toys. Um, I've heard some horror stories, so um, when your cat has finished playing with them, pop them away in a cupboard or somewhere where your cat can't get to them and your cat will be kept safe. The other thing that you can do is when you get a new cat toy is just have a look out for any parts, plastic parts that can be, that can come out and if you can get those out before giving it to your cat um, then all the better. As you can probably tell I'm evangelistic when it comes to cats and play. Not only does it help kittens hone their hunting skills, it provides stimulation for indoor cats. It's a fantastic way of preventing boredom. For timid cats, it's a really good way to challenge their brain, release tension in their bodies and raise their mood. For elderly cats, gentle regular play over short periods can help with any tendencies for them to maybe gain weight and certainly slow down the decline in cognitive function and give them a better quality of life. So what do I think would make the world a better place for cats? Get them playing more. Simple as that. Thanks ever so much for watching and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye.